Yeah, community matters, especially these days. I'm Jay Fidel, it's Think Tech, and we're talking about an analysis of our second survey, which just came in um, in the first two weeks of May. It ended on May 15th. And uh, we call that survey Snapshots of Life in Lockdown. There's a certain poetry there. <laughs> and we have Catherine Knorr to help us again um, to examine the answers we got. Uh, to try to make sense of it and, and learn by it. And uh, we'll do surveys like this on a regular basis, one a month anyway, uh, and see what we can learn about our, what do you want to call it, our, our community. Okay, so the first question, Catherine. Oh, welcome to the show, Catherine. Oh, Thank good you for afternoon. doing this. Yeah. <laughs> good afternoon, Jay. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> we so enjoy having you in these discussions. Um, Catherine is is the host of um, what's the name of your show? More, much more on medicine. Much more Correct. on medicine. Yeah. So um, okay, the first one is: Are you working? Which seems like a basic enough question. And just looking at the uh, at the colored chart here, it looks like um, most people. I mean, really, sixty percent working at home. Um, and the and the second category was this is interesting. Second category was, uh, let me see if I can tell what is the second category. Uh, oh, yeah, of that, do we have, we don't have the other, do we? Okay, we don't know what other was, but we know that most people were working at home. So what do you, what do you take from these answers, Catherine? Well, I'm not surprised at all because it seems like um, it is reflective of the stay-at-home order that people are working at home. And I'm actually working partly at home, even though I'm an exempt business, and um, also working at my office. So I think that where it says I'm working in my regular job, those are probably exempt businesses um, or first responders, medical uh, workers, or even... even uh, uh, restaurant workers who are performing services that are allowed. Yeah, interesting that 60% um, roughly working at home in this period between May 1st and May 15th, and only 15%, only 15% working in regular place of work. That's, um, and only 1% was terminated or furloughed with severance. Uh, that's very interesting. And yeah. other probably um, refers to people who are retired and they're no longer in the workforce as well. Yeah, right, with different situations. So I, I guess, you know, that's Hawaii. Uh, we are productive. And my guess, don't you, don't you think my guess is the people who say they're working at home really are working at home. I mean, there's got to be a little, a little bit of soft on that, but uh, for the most part, the people that I know, when they say they're working at home, they really are. Um, one thing that this probably doesn't reflect is um, that I don't think that a lot of um, terminated restaurant workers uh, or, or hotel workers are actually responding to this survey. Well, yeah, I think it's worth uh, taking a moment to say that we have uh, our mailing list is uh, something appro approaching 8,000. Um, and that's who we address it to. But I think beyond the 8,000, there are people who, you know, who watch our shows and, and the link has appeared on our, on our website. So it's not limited to our subscribers. Um, but uh, people who watch, you know, the, um, the community that's responding here are people who watch Think Tech. Mm -hmm. And right. I guess it tells you a little about that community is what it mm -hmm. tells you. Yeah. Right, right. And they may not be the hotel workers or the restaurant workers or the airline workers. Right, right. They should start watching Think Tech immediately. They, yeah. they absolutely should. Yeah. Okay, so question two, uh, how are you spending your time at home? And in this case, um, uh, we asked them to select all that, all that apply. So working remotely, that was a pretty big one. Uh, exercising, that was a pretty big one. Mm -hmm. And uh, going online, that was a pretty, pretty big one. <laughs> no surprise there. This is my personal experience too. 
Um, so the largest category was uh, working remotely. That's what people say they're doing. Uh, exercising, I, I guess that means inside the house, although I take walks. Um, what do you think of these answers, Catherine? Okay, I do have commentary here. Um, exercising, I think, includes, um, from people's perspective, taking walks. And I think people are feel cooped up and more people are going for walks. I'm doing a lot of Zumba on Zoom and um, and a, a few other classes on Zoom. So I'm actually doing some of my, most of my exercise on my computer at home, but I do get out for long walks. And, but one thing that's interesting here is the homeschooling aspect. Um, I thought, my perception was that more people were having to deal with homeschooling. And this leads me to believe that people who are involved with homeschooling are just too busy to respond to a survey. You're right. Again, it goes to who, who is uh, our audience and who is responding. Online, 60% said yes. Hmm. And no surprise there. And watching entertainment, 50%. I find that interesting that more people are online than are watching television or broadcast entertainment. That's interesting. I don't know if it's true, but it's interesting. Right, right. <laughs> and doing creative things, uh, that's commendable. Sure. Um, so there's 39%, that's pretty good. So the whole, I think people, at least the people who responded here um, are, are pretty constructive about um, the way they're spending their time. So that's to their credit. Sure. I wonder, I wonder if it stays, this, you know, if we ask the same question, in, in, and uh, all things being equal, if we ask the same question a month or two or three months down the road, I know we get different answers, don't you think? Sure. And, you know, I think the creative aspect, I think that is pretty broad. Um, it could mean writing. It could mean doing art. It could be uh, actually even doing um, films and, and social media where you're having a creative element like YouTube or TikTok. So, uh, or, or doing creative projects with your children. That would be another thing as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, the third question, and this is about broadcast or online media. Um, and we again said select all that apply. So a lot of people watching movies and entertainment, but what's interesting is there are more people watching news and documentaries mm -hmm. uh, that are watching movies and entertainment or spending more of their time doing it. Sports, like there's not a lot of sports to watch. <laughs> That's a problem. <laughs> um, and religion, okay. Well, you know, Hawaii is a pretty religious place, but only uh, 10 or 11% are watching religion. And a very small number of people not watching at all. Um, and my guess is that uh, there are other people watching other things. That's why there's uh, some 10 or 15% said uh, other. But, um, uh, what, I, what I find interesting is that, um, and, and we talked about this with Hawaiian Electric a couple of times, you know, watching television has become a major activity while you're home. And indeed, I think that the cable and the, and the movie channels, uh, they're doing gangbusters now. They're bringing all kinds of, you know, new movies, brand new movies that haven't opened in theaters because uh, there are no theaters. Uh, online and we, we're getting the best entertainment online than we've ever had. Think about it. What are your thoughts? Well, you know, this one was interesting to me because I think during a normal time in our lives that the sports would be a lot more. But the problem we have is obviously sports pretty much shut down and that all you have really is some uh, repeat broadcasts and some esports applications. Uh, but this kind of made me laugh because my brother who watches sports about 80% of the time and he's retired, he has found some ways to watch sports that are pretty creative. And, uh, uh, but I think, I think this is very reflective of what's going on. And, um, and I think no matter how many people respond, this is what you're probably going to get. Well, I think the most interesting thing for me is the news and, and documentaries. Um, mm. Just like there's a lot of great movies on these days, really so many good movies 
um, there's also a lot of good documentaries. So if you care about what's going on in our strange and challenging and unhappy world, um, you know, you want to watch those documentaries. A lot of them are about COVID and other processes, political processes we ought to know about. Um, and the news, you know, to me, the news is watching those news channels. It's, it's watching PBS NewsHour, it's watching uh, MSNBC or CNN, or, oh my God, Fox News. Um, it's watching all these news channels. And if you add it all up, there's more people watching news and documentaries or spending their time doing that, um, you know, than, than anything else. But there's going to be an interesting shift, and that is... We're going to be shifting more to animated um, material because the studios are not able to film right now. So there's not going to be a lot of new material. However, I have read that there's an attempt to film some, um, some movies and TV in uh, foreign places that don't have as much risk. So we'll have to see in a year, we may not have as much new material to watch in entertainment. You know, I hear you say that and I have this vision. You know, we, we know that a lot of these wonderful movies that are coming online were made before COVID, right? And they wouldn't, they wouldn't exist. Um, but there will be a, a huge rash of movies that are made about COVID or how the world right. is being affected. And I, I don't know how, how Hollywood or movie makers in general are gonna handle this. And I have this really funny image in my head about how you have this very intense moment on a very intense movie and everybody's standing six feet apart. <laughs> and not touching each other. <laughs> that's, that's, you know what, I'm glad you mentioned that. I'm, I, I'm writing a novel and, uh, and I think I've got to, um, and there are COVID, it's during the COVID time and, and I've got to incorporate those kind of things in there. <laughs> <laughs> the drama <laughs> six feet away. <laughs> drama has a different meaning now. <laughs> okay, so now we're in question four. I hope we gotta we gotta move on here. Uh, email is the biggest one. Video conferencing, uh, a lot of people doing Zoom and the like, uh, working remotely. No surprise there. Uh, shopping online, newspapers and newsletters even more than shopping and. Uh, social media, okay, and Facebook and the like. So what does this tell us? It tells us that people are doing a lot of different things online and maybe they're becoming more sophisticated about the things they do uh, and they're bec becoming diverse about the things they do. Um, but you can, I guess what it tells me, you can lead a rich intellectual, if not commercial life uh, online now where maybe you didn't realize that these possibilities existed before. Absolutely, I think um, that it's it's interesting. I would think there would be more online shopping, but I think people want to get out of the house, and so they're actually uh, getting out of the house to go to the grocery store, and so um, maybe they're that's their shopping. Plus, they don't have as much need now that they're um, at home. Um, but the video conferencing, I am not surprised at that. I'm doing a ridiculous amount of Zoom right now. And, and I think other people are having that same experience. Yeah, I think this is going to stick afterward. Mm -hmm. this, not, not only these individual things, but the pattern of things that's going to stick. We're going to be spending more time online going forward. <laughs> okay, question five. Who are you, who are you video conferencing with? Uh, select all that apply. Okay, looks like the winner there is a toss up between coworkers and friends. Maybe sometimes they are the same. Um, and I guess other could mean anything in the world. Not that much with healthcare professionals, not that much with tech support professionals. And some people, um, they, don't, they don't conference with anybody. So uh, I, find, I find this very interesting. And, and you know, in our house, we do we, we try to have like, like social meetings with our friends online and our family, um, not as much. The friends are more, more important in terms of video conferencing and coworkers, that's part of your work. So that's almost, um, you know, a business issue. What do you learn from this chart, Catherine? 
Well, you know, other is pretty high and I would, mine would be an other as well because I have, um, you can't call my other to be coworkers, but it's more meetings and doing Zumba classes and um, doing webinars, things like that, that, that um, are not included in the list. And, and I think a lot of people are finding that their Zoom calls don't really quite fit within coworkers, family, or friends. But um, I think that uh, th this makes a lot of sense. Yeah, you know, and again, it's dynamic. You wonder what would happen, all things being equal, if you ask the same question to the same people a month from now, would it be the same? Probably not. And I think there's a blush thing here. You know, we've only been doing this stuff for about a month, two months max, more like six weeks. And um, a lot of it was really thrilling at the beginning. Maybe it's a little less thrilling now. Right. Uh, and uh, so maybe, you know, maybe having Zoom calls with your friends get, gets old after a while. I, I think that, yeah, I think family and friends will drop off after a while. Yeah. How are you getting your food? Question six. Uh, I guess the big one is they just go to the food store because mm -hmm. I think we have been led to believe the food store is relatively safe and uh, you can you can you can do it without a tremendous amount of risk um take out well, that's substantial too uh looking at the chart now um food from family and friends i know we do people come and drop by at our house um groceries delivered it's only 14 percent. it's not that much um shopping online picking groceries up Delivering groceries, not that much. I think most people in Hawaii, or at least the people we deal with, go trundle on down to uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, the supermarket and they buy what they need because it's not all that threatening and they figure they can get in and out without taking a risk. Um, and takeout restaurants. We've got a lot of traffic with takeout restaurants. I, I, I'm not doing that very much myself, but I guess people... They like restaurants. <laughs> Hawaii is a restaurant kind of place, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think I think um, people want to get out of their homes, and I think going to the grocery store is something that they're allowed to do, and um, and to have an opportunity to get out. Uh, that's what they're doing, and I think um, people want to support the restaurants as well and take takeout. I didn't do that at first, but now I'm doing more and more takeout just because now. I'm kind of sick of eating groceries and I bet other people have the same situation and they're increasing their takeout. Yeah, and this is gonna change when the restaurants uh, start opening. Who was mm -hmm. telling me, uh, one of our, one of our uh, guests earlier today was that um, he, oh yeah, state of Florida. Um, he goes to restaurants that have big separations between the tables. Um, he and his wife love to go to good restaurants. Uh, they wear masks on the way in. They wear masks when they order. <laughs> mm -hmm. But when the food comes, obviously, they take off the masks. <laughs> when they pay yeah. the bill, I think, when they pay the bill, they put the masks back on again. <laughs> but you, you know what's interesting is I went to Ala Moana um, over the weekend, and um, not very much was open. And I was really hungry, but even though there were some restaurants open, my challenge was you can't sit down anywhere and you have to wear a mask. So I would order something and then go in my car and eat it and then go back and wander around the mall. And so my car has become my restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Time for a good Clark cleaning. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think, I think um, the detailers will, will have a business uh, after go. all this. There you go, a new business. Okay, question seven, we have to move along. Um, how well are you eating? I'm eating right, I'm eating too much, and I'm not eating enough is a very minor point. Um, I'm not sure this is an, an honest answer because... <laughs> Because I think a lot of people are, uh, are uh, you know, uh, uh, eating too much at home right. with, with uh, snacks and this and that all day long, watching television all day long, and, sure. and or, or even working online. You know that you tend to have a, a little compulsion food near you and and so forth. Uh, I, I saw a, a very funny uh, photograph uh, came around 
by a friend of mine, and it had uh, something about a, a, a group of people on a beach, <laughs> and this is, you know, supposed to be right after, you know, the social uh, lockdown was was terminated, and they're all like 900 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, you know, I think I think the way people answered this was aspirational. They want to think that they're eating right, but they're probably eating too much. And yeah, right. the way I look at it is that people in America eat too much. And yeah, yeah. so I think it, I think we should flip this and the ones that are eating right should be the green and the ones that are <laughs> you go. The, the I'll bet way. you're right about that. Okay, question eight. How much exercise are you you're getting? And uh, uh, every day seems to be the winner. Every what few days, that's the second. Uh, and that could be aspirational too. Do you think that's really happening? I, I think that people are taking walks and... I'm not really, you know, they might be walking a block, they might be walking a couple blocks. Um, I'm pretty um, serious in, about exercise, so I probably would, would probably, if I were to evaluate what they're doing, I'm not sure if I would call it exercise, but I'm really happy that people are getting out there and moving. That's the most important thing. Yeah, well, it goes to your state of mind for sure. Okay, question nine, are you wearing face masks? And uh... I guess if we look at the uh, the text on this, I wear a face mask only when I am outdoors, away from home. Um, that's uh, is that 34%. This, I wear a face mask when I am indoors or outdoors away from home, uh, 30%. Okay, well, it's roughly the same. Um, and then I wear a face mask away from home only when I, when I think I'm at risk. Um, that's all this is reasonable i think isn't it mm -hmm. Pe yeah. people are abiding by the suggestion uh, as more than a suggestion it's a rule um and they are mm, taking reasonable steps to and after all what else can you do this is the one thing you have like complete well so social distancing this is part of it uh you have complete control over wear a mask or not wear a mask and, you know, this does reflect my observations in getting out. When I'm at a grocery store, everyone's wearing a mask and usually wearing them properly. When I was at Ala Moana, I saw a number of people wearing the masks improperly where they were under their chin or they had their nose sticking out or whatever. But I did, but I can reflect on that and say that the ones that were, had either taken off their mask or wearing, were wearing it improperly were outside and they weren't inside. When they went inside, I believe that they would likely wear them properly. Yeah, well, inside is more, inside somebody else's space is the most dangerous of all right. because you don't know if the droplets are there. And the, the last thing was uh, the droplets can hang around, micro droplets for 15, 16 minutes. That's a long time. Um, now, this is interesting. Have you been ill? No, I have not been ill. And that's way, this is question 10 way up the, that's 91 and, and change percent i have not been ill so the people who responded to our uh, survey really have not been ill and then the second one was i've had an illness other than coronavirus only five percent um i don't think there was anybody here who said uh oh yeah i've been ill and i didn't know it was coronavirus that's one percent so luckily um, the people who respond to the survey have been healthy. This is a very good thing. Yeah, um, I think that um, if we have most of our respondents um, living in Hawaii, although we don't know if that's the case, um, then the chance of having someone with COVID is fairly remote because we've only had 634 cases or something like that. And most people have recovered with uh, maybe less than 50 active cases now and 17 deaths. But however, if you were to do this survey in New York or Chicago or California, you would very likely get very different answers. Oh, yeah. Well, and to go back to the masks issue, I remember reading a couple of days ago that in the state of Michigan, uh, there was a fellow who was in a retail store and he didn't have a mask on and the and the cashier asked him to put a mask on or wouldn't 
who wouldn't do the transaction for him unless he had a mask on. So he shot her dead. That's um, that is, and that's what you have in some other states. Right. It's whole different mindset. Absolutely. And because we do um, have an Asian, uh, a big Asian influence here, I think we've all experienced um, the culture of mask wearing for many years, where we see um, Japanese nationals that are visiting wearing masks and things like that. Or many people in Hawaii have actually visit, uh, visited Asian countries where mask wearing is a uh, um, part of the culture. So yeah, it's not, and it's not to protect yourself so much as to, to pay respect to the community and protect the community. So right, you right. Give them a call. Yeah. So it, it works well for Hawaii. Well, Hawaii is in large part uh, influenced by uh, Asian cultures, and that's an example. Uh, okay. So has has someone in your household been ill and and the good news there, it's about the same percentage. Um, yeah, uh, slightly less, but just really about the same. Um, the household members have not been ill. And, and you know, that, that, that does tell you one thing that, that is on the list of recommendations is that the people in your household are essentially um, doing quarantine with you, if you're right. staying home. And so th those are the people you can trust best it's not like uh, some friend comes over and says, hey, let's, let's schmooze together in your kitchen. That's different mm -hmm. because you don't know who that person has been with. You don't right. know whether, you know, he's tracking something around. So anyway, uh, and it's no surprise to find that the number of uh, healthy people um, who responded to the survey and who are in the same household is about the same. Okay, right. have you been tested for coronavirus? It's a big question. <clears throat> okay, and it's uh, 86%. I have no symptoms and have not been tested. Uh, that's good. And let's see if, how many people have been tested. Uh, oh, 2% don't want to be tested. I find that very interesting and regressive. Wow. Um, I've been tested and found negative. Uh, 4%. I've been tested and found positive 0%. <laughs> what do you get out of this, Catherine? Well, um, you know, we know that you wouldn't be eligible for testing in Hawaii unless you had symptoms that were very specific. Um, however, that's fine because even if you had no symptoms and had really no reason to be tested, you may not want to put the effort into it. So I'm not surprised that with the other answers and with our data that we would have this, that, um, you know, people would not have symptoms and they would not have been tested. Although I'd like to be tested to find out if my cold that I had in February was COVID. Mm, give you antibodies, whatnot, yeah. Right. Uh, this might change also going forward because uh, hopefully there'll be a lot more testing. Uh, if, and the, the way I, I think it's gonna come up is the way it came up in Korea which was successful at this, I mean, way more successful than we have been. Um, if, if you had some symptoms, it would be free. If you mm -hmm. had no symptoms, but you were interested in being tested, um, it would cost you like $125. Okay. Uh, and that, that's going to be the average cost, I think, going forward. That's the way it's going to be handled when they do get testing worked out. Um, the other thing in Korea is it, it's down to five minutes or 10 minutes. It's, you know, you stand there, wait for the results. You know, back a few weeks ago, I know people who were tested, um, they had to wait for 10 days, 11 days, 12 days before they knew the answer. That was ridiculous. But now in Korea, they have five minutes and hopefully, hopefully soon enough, the U.S. will have five minutes too. And that, well, that really helps you. Right. And they'll have home tests that you can do at home that you just buy it at at Longs and you, um, you know, submit it somewhere. And um, I, I don't think that's far off. Yeah, I hope not would. Okay, question 13, how is your state of mind? Most people said, um, and it's not that big a number actually, 56% said, I'm feeling fine I'm in my state of mind. Almost, uh, what, 28, almost 29 said, I'm handling it, which I, I take to mean um, they're not feeling fine, 
and maybe they're not feeling all that great. I'm troubled, but I'm still okay. 12, almost 13%. Nobody said, I think I need to talk to a professional. So I guess, I guess we can you know, make the assumption, can't we, that if you cooped up for any length of time, you do go a little stir crazy. Um, right, right. But I think that the introverts are um, enjoying this. <laughs> this is a time to be an introvert, actually. <laughs> okay, we have a couple left now. Um, do you have enough money to continue to shelter in place? That, that is, stay home. And uh, most people who answered our survey said, I have enough for more than, what, three months. Um, and that's, that's comforting, but that's our population who are responding. Uh, that, and that was uh, 54%. Um, but then, you know, it's a little troubling that we don't, we don't know about the rest of them. <laughs> the 7% 7, 7 said, I have one month more. 6% uh, I have two months more. Uh, 12 almost 13 percent I have three months more um, and, and I don't know what the other was but uh, it just strikes me that there are a fair number of people out there even among our survey uh, responders who really don't have that much money to continue this what well um, well considering that uh, 18 percent of our um, I think it was 18 percent of the population applied for food stamps uh, in Hawaii and uh, the past month. Um, I think I saw that today. I may have that wrong, but um, I think that tells you something about the condition of the economy. I don't think it's so good. I think these are the more, a little bit more affluent than um, the general population. Yeah, well, this is another dynamic one. Can you imagine if all things being equal, we asked this in a month or two from now, it would be different. Mm -hmm. Okay, question 15, the last one. How is, this is really a question that's important to me because I think this is, we should be asking about this in, in further surveys and drilling down. How has your life changed since, your, uh, you, since you started sheltering in place? And most people said, my life is pretty much the same. Uh, some said my life has gotten worse, um, but it's not remarkable. I mean, you, you don't get the feeling out of this uh, that, that, it's, that it's all in a, in a cocked hat. It's, it's pretty much level here in Hawaii. Uh, of course, it's only 44% said my life is pretty much the same. And only 21 and change said my life has gotten worse. What, what do you think this tells us about the real deal? Well, I, it might tell you that we have more um, affluent work at home people that are introverts. Um, <laughs> So, you know, um, I know that the people that my closest um, friends, um, they all are very happy with the new situation. They're enjoying being at home and they don't, they seem to be quite cheerful, but they're all introverts and they uh, either are retired or they're working from home anyway. And this will be an interesting question to ask again next month or the month after and see yeah. if people feel the same way. Well, that takes us to, to the last question we have, Catherine, and I really enjoy these discussions with you. I enjoy uh, examining and um, connecting the dots uh, with these survey answers. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you, Jay. Next time soon. Take care. Stay safe. All right. Aloha. Aloha.